Um, Bruce and I today are going to uh, attempt to uh, create a piece completely uh, spontaneously. And um, we're both jazz musicians, so our stock in trade is improvisation. So we stand and fall on uh, how well we can think on our feet and uh, create on the spot. But there's more to it than that. We have to also incorporate elements of interaction, communication, conversation, and whatnot. And I thought I would just talk a little bit about, without turning this into anything resembling a lecture, a little, about the, a little bit about where this kind of improvisation came from. By the time uh, 1960 hit, jazz musicians, jazz was, of course, a very established art form by then. But the jazz musicians, starting around the year 1960, decided that they didn't want to be uh, limited by having to improvise uh, over the, the structure of a particular tune or a particular style. And they created a, created a style called free jazz, which was essentially just a conversational art where a group of musicians would get together and create music uh, spontaneously without any, or at least with very little preconception of what was going to happen. And I've thought a lot about that music uh, and some of the characteristics of that music, it seemed to be very bombastic and very angry and very uh, chaotic. And because of that, I think it never really established a very large audience. But I thought about that quite a bit. And, and as I thought about the musicians that were involved in that particular style, I think three characteristics come up. Most of these musicians were black. And um, being black in the year 1960 in the United States would not, was not necessarily a happy, a happy thing. The other thing is they were mostly young. Uh, almost all of them were under 30, and many of them were in their early 20s, and a few of them were teenagers. And of course, there's a certain amount of angst that goes along with, uh, with that. And, uh, and the third thing is that heroin played a big role in, in the music of that particular time. So for Bruce and I, <laughs> I think we've got none of those characteristics, as far as I know, uh, should, should not enter into this, which means our music would just by definition have to be very different. We could, we could um, emulate or imitate the style of uh, free jazz in the United States in 1960, but it wouldn't really be coming from the heart. So what we need to do is we need to interact with one another and link up with our own particular feelings and our own particular... Um, thoughts and, and whatnot, and, and by doing that, we're going to try to create a piece on the spot which represents this time and this place and our particular feelings and the fact that we know each other and the fact that we're friends and colleagues and whatnot. We haven't discussed this piece. We don't know how it's going to begin, and we don't know how it's going to end, but I think that's what we're all here for today, to, to try these different things. So that's what we're all about today, and uh, we're going to see where it takes us. Also, I want you to know, even though we don't know how the piece is going to end, we really do know when it's going to end. <laughs> we will be in touch with the clock. Uh, the thing that intrigued me when Joe came up with the title of this talk, the uh, Jazz Improvisation is Conversation, what intrigued me was the conversation idea, because you, you learn conversation skills when you're a baby. <laughs> That's how you get fed. That's how you get changed, you know. You learn these things, and then it, you know, kind of, you grow. You learn that if you're, you learn to have conflict by watching your parents, and so you know you both talk at the same time much louder than you would normally talk. That's how my parents conflicted. <laughs> so I suck at conflict. But anyway, um, uh, later in life, when I finally got married, I learned that conversation is very one-dimensional. And I learned that the hard way, because we'd be talking about something, she'd be talking about something, and I'd say, oh, I love this song. You know, we, we, <laughs> we could be in the supermarket, we could be anywhere, or I could just be remembering a song that I love. <laughs> she has to live with me. But uh, that, that kind of conversation uh, isn't exactly what's going to be happening between Joe and I. It's, there's a lot more of things going on because we both are talking, in a sense, at the same time and trying to make beauty or dissonance, which can be beautiful too, together. So that's us.
Thank you. 